So in this video we're going to learn about Electron. Now Electron or Electron JS is a cross-platform UI building framework that allows you to build your UI applications in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, all your favorite web technologies. To get started with Electron, we'll begin by downloading npm and git. npm is needed because Electron runs on top of Node, and we'll need git to pull down the Electron quick start. Now I'm doing this tutorial on the beautiful Pop! OS, which is currently based on Ubuntu 17.10. Electron typically requires the latest version of Node, which Ubuntu 17.10 barely has. If you want to work in Electron, just make sure that you have the latest version of Node. It'll make your life easier. Once both packages are done downloading and installing, do npm-v and node-v. In this video, we're going to be using npm 3.5.2 and node 6.11.4. The latest version of Node as of this video is 9.1, and the latest LTS release is 8.9, so that gives you an idea of how far behind Ubuntu is. So the next thing we're going to do is get the handy Quick Start project provided by the folks at Electron. Just Google for Electron Quick Start, and the first or second result is probably the one we'll want. So let's clone the Git repository. After you clone the repo, open your favorite code editor. In this video, I'm going to use gedit because I know pretty much everybody's going to have that. Obviously, you can use VS Code, Atom, Genie, whatever you like to use. If you are going to use gedit like me, make sure you open the side panel so you can see your file system. Because Electron apps are based on three different languages, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, the code is spread across different files. Being able to view your file system in the text editor makes it a hell of a lot easier to manage your code. So in the terminal you use to clone the quick start repo, do npm install. Once the npm install is done, do npm start. Now depending on your distro and what all you have installed, you may run into this error. Electron apps plug into gconf and they need the system libraries to do so. Now I've never seen this error on Fedora, but here it is on Pop! OS. It might be due to the fact we're using an older version of Node, but either way, just install the gconf libraries. Once we've installed the required system libraries, we can do npm start again, and we see our app. This is an Electron app. Now folks are quick to point out that this is basically a Chrome window, and uh, yeah, it is. However, an Electron app isn't just an embedded Chrome window. It can do a hell of a lot more than Chrome can do, specifically I.O. stuff. It can access your file system. That's really what makes it so powerful as a desktop app. You can even use the developer tools and change the canvas real time. Now obviously these changes don't persist, but it's really, really cool when you're testing and troubleshooting. So now that we've used the Electron Quick Start project, let's explore the code a little bit. Now pretty much every bit of code you're going to see here is boilerplate code. In other words, it's basically required for every Electron app, but it's still interesting to explore. We'll start with the package.json. All Electron apps, and pretty much all Node apps, have a package.json. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here, but the most interesting thing is the script section. Start Electron dot. Now you'll notice that we used npm start to actually launch the application. If you use just straight main to launch it, you'll get this error. And you can't use straight Electron because it's not installed in the system. It's a separate node module, and we use npm as an interface to actually use it. The file where all the node magic happens is the main.js. There's a lot of stuff here, but luckily, there's comments everywhere. I'm not going to go through each and every comment, but if you want to make any changes to the boilerplate code, look at the create window function. This is where you'll specify the window properties, like the height and width. You can also set things like icons here. And then you have your HTML file. Yes, it is a flat HTML file with a doc type and a character set, the works. It seems kind of weird and archaic at first, but when you start digging into it, it actually makes a lot of sense. You're not using native or application code to build your view. You're using HTML, which is arguably a language that is designed to create views. Now there's no CSS styling in this project, but if you did want to add some style, you could add it inline, or you could add a CSS file. So now let's modify this quick start project and give it a touch of our own. I think the simplest change we can make is adding an icon. So to make this object a little bit easier to read, I'm going to change the format a bit. And I have to use some weird node syntax to access the file system to get at the icon. But the key is icon and the value is the relative path to your file. Using path.join followed by the dir name and then the path. Node tends to provide some pretty descriptive error messages which is cool. The reason for this error was because I forgot a comma after height. Alright, now I have an ms-dos icon. It was as easy as that. Now let's add a pair of buttons. Obviously it helps to be familiar with web development, but if you're not, there is so much documentation and tutorials out there for web development, it is unreal. 
Electron is happy working with standard HTML, so these buttons with IDs work just fine. So now we have a pair of buttons, let's make them do something. We're going to create a new file called index.js. And in that file, we're going to have one line that says document.getElementById. The ID is button one dot add event listener. The event we're going to be listening for is click. And that event is going to call a function, which is going to log to the console. Now we tell our view to require the new JavaScript file. Now we launch the app. We go to the console. Now when we click the button, we can see the output in the developer tool console, not the actual terminal that we launched Electron from. So the last thing we're going to do is a little bit of styling. And we're going to do it with inline styling, every UX person's favorite. So we'll change this H1's color to blue. And how about this button to green? There you go. See, styling is easy. So I think that about covers the gist of getting started with Electron. Hopefully I've successfully demonstrated how incredibly powerful Electron is, and maybe now you see why so many modern apps like VS Code, Atom, even Discord are written with it. I know not everybody loves JavaScript, but being able to write your native apps using HTML and CSS is just awesome. Once you get used to the way Node works and the more JavaScript-esque stuff, you kind of get used to it and get over it. Now obviously I can dive a lot deeper on topics like CSS and things, but I'll save that for another video. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share it on all your favorite social networks. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.